Let's begin with what is a system. An engineered system interacts with its environment and is composed of different elements of hardware and software and people and data and procedures. The environment includes various external elements that include external systems, external users, and the physical environment. This is often called a black box view, where we don't expose the internals of the system, we focus strictly on the external interactions. In traditional system engineering, there's different documentation that we use to describe the system and its external interactions. We have what a system level specification, uh, interface control documents at the system level, which defines the interfaces between the system and the external entities, and uh, operational concept documents, CONOPS. And so we have all this different documentation to describe this black box view. We also note that the system is composed of these different elements of hardware, of software, of people, and data. And they interact to enable the, the external interactions of the system. So the pieces are working together to achieve the interactions that the system must provide, the external interactions. This is often called a white box view, where you expose the internal workings of the system. There's different documentation that we use to describe the white box view. We have specifications of the components, component specifications, interface control documents amongst the components and the subsystems, and uh, design documentation such as a system design or an architecture description document. These are all used to specify these different elements of the system. One of the challenges is how do we synchronize all of this different documentation? And that is a big challenge. It takes time to create this documentation and it's both time and challenging to maintain and synchronize all of this documentation. This is where a system model comes into play and can offer some real value because a system model is a cohesive description of your system that captures much of this information in a more unified and consistent way. We'll come back to that in the next section. So, as part of the system's perspective, let's talk about the value that systems engineering brings. Well, system engineering aims to ensure that the pieces work together to achieve the objectives of the whole. Think about a car and think about the pieces of a car, the elements that make up a car, uh, engines and transmissions and, and uh, chassis and bodies and all the different elements that make up a car, power steering and what have you. All those pieces have to come together, work together to achieve the objectives of the whole car. The whole car, its objective is to transport people and things in a safe and reliable and comfortable and affordable way. So that's what system engineering tries to accomplish. In order to do that, it's involved in architecting balanced solutions, solutions that must balance often competing needs, for example, higher performance and lower cost, uh, and at the same time manage uh, evolving technology and changing requirements. So that's another really critical aspect of what system engineering uh, helps to uh, address, and manage the ever-increasing complexity of the systems and the associated risk of the development. So in order to achieve that value, system engineering has a traditional set of practices. And at sort of at the most fundamental uh, level, the key aspect of system engineering is this notion of flow down and flow up, where we flow requirements down from a higher level down to a lower level and down to a next lower level. And as we do this, we synthesize design options and we d 
derive new design alternatives, and we flow requirements down uh, through this process. And then we, on the other side, we have to take the design elements that are uh, designed by engineers, electrical, mechanical, and software engineers that perform the detailed design, and basically integrate those elements and verify those elements as we move them back up to from component level to subsystem to system, all the way up to what we call mission level. So this is sort of fundamental to the practice of systems engineering. And we'll come back to this. You'll see uh, different versions of this as we go through uh, some of the later slides. Another aspect of the system perspective is recognizing the multidisciplinary role of the system engineer. One example of this is in a, a, a typical use case that a system engineer performs, which is the an analyzing the impact of a requirements change. When you do this, it in fact does span multiple disciplines. Let's look at this example of a, a car, and we see two requirements down here in the lower left. One is a minimum turn radius of 24 feet, and the other is a dry pavement braking distance where we need to stop the car starting at 60 miles per hour going down to zero in less than 110 feet. But due to, for example, safety regulations, we need to reduce that braking distance from 110 feet down to 90 feet. And this is a, a very typical system engineering scenario, if you will. And so what we have to do is assess the impact of that change on the design. So we first we look and we see these yellow highlighted areas and these are all potential parts of the car that may be impacted. And as you drill down, you look at this braking system and you see the, the wheels and, and other parts of the braking subsystem, if you will. And many different aspects are potentially impacted by this seemingly innocuous change in a requirement. Uh, you see the uh, ergonomic pedal uh, pressure and the hydraulic pressure and hydraulic fluid and power rating on a power amplifier, et cetera. So there are many different aspects. And what we do in this change impact is we look at different design artifacts. So for example, uh, in this power rating, we're gonna, we're gonna drill down and look at a, a schematic and see the impact on this electrical design. And this may be done by the electrical designer themselves. But the system engineer kind of has to orchestrate this. And other artifacts that may be uh, impacted. Here's a, a control loop for the braking subsystem. And here's a, a failure modes and effects analysis that's performed by the reliability engineer and other data. So the bottom line is the system engineer has to orchestrate all of these requirements change impact across all these different disciplines. And this is fundamental to the system perspective. 